bear with me and I'll just get the recording started for you. Do you want, do you want yeah. to do some introductory comments before we start? Not too late. Leon has started it for you. No, but all right, we're in. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Thanks very much for your attendance this morning. Uh, obviously, hopefully, another couple of folk will join us. If not, we can record those as apologies. Uh, first off, then, any declarations of interest, colleagues? No. Thank you. On that, then, can we move on to item three in the agenda, uh, which is the cabinet work plan for 2020 21 and the progress as such and the cabinet work plan for 21 22 uh, and a report, I presume, Lorraine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, um, Councillor Buchanan. Um, just a, a very short report. So the report summarises the work plan that we've completed for um, the, the year we're in at the moment. You'll see there's a small number of areas that have been delayed, primarily due to the pandemic. Yeah. Um, where work the, the teams weren't able to carry out the, the work that they normally would have. So that's highlighted in the report and we'll catch up on those at future times. We've then got the work plan going forward for Cabinet. Um, we have extended it very slightly. It usually goes from April to April. But what we've done this year is extended it very slightly into for the whole of um, April 2022 so that um, it takes us up to the next local government election. So it's actually a work plan for 13 months. Um, there's a number of things um, in that work plan. Um, obviously, we still have challenges through ongoing recovery and renewal work because of the pandemic and pressures um, on people. But hopefully the work plan gives you a forward look for what will be um, coming up in the Cabinet agenda over the next 13 months. So thank you very much. OK, thanks very much for that, Lorraine. Can I just check, Paul, have you got sound yet? Uh, leader, uh, Leon is going to call Councillor Kane and see if we can get these sound. Oh, can you hear me? Sorry. Oh, that's you. I can hear you, yes. Can't, yeah. can't hear anything, sorry. <laughs> see you all. I can't hear you. No, we can hear you. <laughs> OK, we'll try and get that. Uh, yeah, but we'll, we'll try and get that fixed, colleagues. Uh, noting that, yeah, thanks very much for that report, Lorraine. I think uh, we all know how difficult a year it has been. And I think to get as much of the work, the programmed work done, uh, to get through just over 80 percent of it is uh, really quite incredible. We know the areas that have uh, been delayed slightly and the very obvious reasons for that. So I think uh, all in all, it's actually uh, a report that highlights the huge amount of work that has continued to be done. And indeed, you know, not forsaking the additional tasks and work that we have had to cover over uh, the course of the last few months. So that's very much appreciated. Happy to open it up for any comments. Nope. On that basis, then, are we happy that uh, in terms of the recommendation that we've considered the work plan for 2020-21, yeah, uh, approve the, approve right. the content right. of the draft work plan for 21-22? And uh, we've identified so any other areas of work that should be included. We will continue to look at that uh, as things progress, particularly in relation to uh, the COVID-19, uh, where we can add and uh, look at all aspects of what we may face moving forward. And I agree that we progress the plan as reviewed after the local government elections in May 2022. Are we happy to agree those recommendations, colleagues? Thank you. Thanks very much, guys. I think we'll maybe give it another minute or two and see if we can get Councillor O'Kane. Uh, on board. Leader, just while we're waiting to try and get Councillor Akin um, sorted out, could I just take the opportunity to introduce Sharon McIntyre to everybody who's here in the meeting this morning. Sharon is, has replaced Paul O'Neill, and so Sharon will be clerking the Cabinet and one or two other meetings. Uh, now that Paul has left us, so just to give you the opportunity to 
put the face to the name. There's no doubt it'll be Sharon's details that will be on the, the agendas in the future. In future. Okay, thanks very much, Eamon. And you're very welcome, Sharon. Much appreciated for you joining us. So thank you. Yes, thank you. Councillor Keane's going to phone in. Um, he thinks it's an issue with his laptop. There was nothing yeah. that I could see obvious to fix, so he's going to dial in and listen that way. OK, no problem. OK, as we wait on Councillor Akane getting a, a dial in, we'll maybe just uh, start to look at item four on the agenda, which is the estimated revenue out, budget outturn for 2020-21. Uh, back with us, Paul, can you hear us? I don't. I don't think Councillor Kane no, can hear us. Um, no, it still looks. Uh, yeah, he may, he may have to try just dialing in. He's maybe just tried again yeah. on the laptop, or maybe just have to suggest he just calls in on on the phone. On the phone, yeah. Okay, if we move on to item four, then colleagues, the revenue budget outturn, and Margaret. <laughs> Thanks, Councillor Buchanan. Um, hopefully, you can hear me. Yeah. Um, the the report this morning is the last one of the year and it monitors the position as at the 31st of January forecast to the end of the year. So um, it's looking better on the basis of the latest information. We're now forecasting a year end underspend of just over 3.7 million. That's around 1.4%. And um, the report sets out all the reasons for the, the variance over the, the various departments. The difference this time is that we're recognising that the COVID pressures that we're experiencing during the year are now being covered by the government funding that we've received. Uh, so we got an increase in government funding towards the end of the year. And in in addition to that, the council has also been managing our non-COVID um, un underspends as far as we can, and we've managed to um, produce £3.7 million pounds of underspend there. But, as I say, there has been quite a bit of increased government grant uh, coming in late in the year, particularly to compensate for the loss of council and trust income um, and on top of that there have been some further reductions in the spending forecasts particularly in education and the environment department. We are constantly updating the position though uh, and since we produced this report we have heard of um, further general government funding coming in for COVID pressures in the, the old year and anything that we don't require to offset pressures will be able to be carried forward and will help us in addressing COVID pressures in the new year. As I said, directors have already taken action. We've been doing it all year 
stopped known essential expenditure. But um, since um, that is now not all required to meet COVID expenditure, then any underspend that we've got at the end of the year will be able to be put into our reserves and that will help us with future years budget planning. So in, in both cases, we, we expect we'll be able to carry forward some COVID and some non-COVID monies to help for next year and potentially for the year after that through reserves. So we're asking the Council to approve the budget adjustments that are shown in the report. Um, and to note that in addition to current position that's forecast now, we are now working on the, the year end annual accounts. We'll update you on that over the next couple of months before the uh, draft accounts are due to be submitted to the Audit and Scrutiny Committee, which is usually about the third week of June. Okay, thanks very much for that update, Margaret. I think we all know uh, that these updates have varied quite a bit over recent months. Uh, and, and, and again, you know, beyond anyone's control as we work through uh, what savings we have made and indeed uh, what impact the pandemic has had and what additional funding we've received uh, in order to try and uh, manage those costs. Uh, so we know that is a very uh, fluctuating position. Uh, I think we all understand that and appreciate the, the huge amount of work that has gone in uh, to try and keep track of that and exactly where we are. Happy to open it up, Councillor Bamforth. Thank you, Chair. Margaret. I'd just like to ask about um, election costs, and I, I appreciate this is only up to January. Um, and I know things like staffing and all that will come out much, much later. But I know Eamon and his team have been working really hard for months and months, even before Christmas, buying things like protective screens, disposable pencils, all that. I can't see it mentioned in there. Is that included? And if so, are we getting reimbursed for that? And do you know if we're getting reimbursed for for the further um, election cost? Because I don't know, is that a COVID cost or is it an election cost? Um, you know, just to get clarification that um, we will be we will be funded for them for those costs. I, I'm sure that uh, Eamon will correct me if if I'm not right here, but um, we do keep a tally of all our costs in relation to each individual election and we for for Holyrood elections we would we would claim that back from the government so we're trying to keep a tally on that now the government have said that they would expect that our costs will be higher for the very reason you've said because of uh, the COVID precautions and we'll be getting um, an extra uh, allowance for that now, anything that, um, if for any reason we're not able to fully recover that from the election grant, then you're right. I would I would class that as COVID expenditure, and I would seek to cover that from the general COVID grants. Or if it runs into next year and we don't have enough of those, then fiscal flexibilities. But either way, I wouldn't expect it to impact on the council's core budget. Okay, thanks for that, Margaret. I'm happy to bring in Eamon to update on that. Thanks, Leader. Um, for every election that we run, uh, parliamentary election that we run, um, the government makes an order which sets out the maximum recoverable amount that we can spend on the election, basically. Um, and for this election, they have given us a 50% uplift in the amount of money that we can spend. So we have that. That's the money, in effect, that, that we've been spending. Albeit that they haven't actually paid us it yet. I think it's coming into our, our, our funds, our, into our accounts next week. But that's that's the money that we've been spending on. Um, they ha they have already said that um, you know if you do go over that amount, based on the fact that you have to spend all this extra money because it's COVID related, they would look sympathetically on the claims because at the end of the election we have to prepare accounts and then submit them. To the Scottish Government for them to agree with what we've actually spent uh, and, and that, that in itself can be quite a challenge, a lot of turning and throwing between the government and ourselves to, to get final agreement on the accounts. But for this one, as I say, they have already said that they will be quite sympathetic if you go over the amount that we spend because the additional expense has been COVID related. Okay, thanks very much for that, Eamon. 
sorry, um, but you will have incurred some of those expenses already, I presume, that and, and will they be in these accounts? Because I know you had to order, well, as I said, the glass screens and, and disposable pencils and all that. Will they already be in this this budget outturn, these these figures in here? The, the money we've already spent on those items, will they already be in this? If we have spent in the current year, we would be assuming grant coming to cover it. Now, if we don't receive that grant until the new year, that's OK, because we can just um, put an accrual through at the year end accounts, just do an account and entry to, to balance it up. But it will be met by grant no matter when we receive the grant. Yeah. OK, thanks. Margaret, any other comments on that paper, colleagues? No, I'd be happy then that we approve all of the environments that are mentioned there. Uh, instruct departments to continue to avoid all non-essential spending. Manage action. Uh, it, it, should it's taken to remedy any avoidable forecast overspends and all departments continue to closely monitor their probable outturn position. I'd be happy to note that paper. Okay, thank you, everyone. Item five on the agenda is uh, East Remshire Council, Balgraston Road and Barhead stopping up order. And Mr. Cahill. Thanks very much, Leader. This is very much just a housekeeping report. I'm simply asking the Cabinet to approve a stopping up order for the old section of the road shown in Appendix 1. As you know, that's now been replaced by a new realigned and constructed Balgraston Road. Usual consultation and including uh, local elected members. No objections at the end of the consultation period. So I'm simply asking you to approve the stopping up order. That's uh, it. Thanks very, yeah, thanks very much for that, Andy. Yeah, I think, and, and anyone who's actually been up at the new road and seen that, and I know it is extremely busy, uh, and the, the, the usage of the uh, dams to Darnley Country Park has increased significantly. I noted a huge increase in the number of people utilising uh, that open space, and that's been significant. Uh, and again, the access is significantly better than it was, uh, and that has certainly helped. Are we happy then, colleagues? Happy to open up for any comments? Councillor Bamford, and then I'll bring in Councillor Lafferty. You're on silent, on mute, Caroline. Sorry, <coughs> didn't press it hard enough. Can you explain what a stopping or up order is? Does that mean, I know you've mentioned somewhere about um, not being adopted. I, I presume we, are, we still own that piece of land and we are still responsible for its upkeep. Correct, <coughs> that's correct. Yeah. So in effect, what, what difference does it make, sorry to appear so uh, ignorant, stop, but I'm, stop, I'm not stop. quite understanding. It's not it's not required, so it's to do with the safe flow of traffic, so we don't put traffic on it anymore. Yes, yeah, it basically it. close the road, Caroline, and utilise the new road which runs alongside it. It's just a formal legal process, and it's to do with traffic management and safety. OK, Councillor Lafferty. Thanks, Leader. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with, uh, and I'm pleased to hear everything uh, Mr Cahill has said to us this morning, don't propose to take up much time, uh, but I would say that I'm delighted to see uh, uh, an improvement in the roads between Newton Mearns and Barhead of any any sort of scale. Uh, it's, it's good news. It's something that we've been considering or trying to achieve for a good many years, if not decades. Uh, so it's good to see a, sh uh, a shot in the right direction this morning. Oh, Thank you. Thanks, thanks Councillor Lafferty. Yeah, it's a significant improvement uh, to the, the access in that area. OK, then, colleagues, if there are no further comments, I'd be happy to agree the recommendation, which is to approve the making and confirmation of the order and delegate the Director of Environment to implement the order in accordance with the associated statutory procedures. OK. Thanks very much, colleagues. Uh, thanks very much for your time this morning. That's much appreciated. I think Paul, you were able to hear all of that at least. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not on the phone and the laptop in a kind of high, strange hybrid model. So. <laughs> in the <laughs> echo. <laughs> okay, no bother. Thanks very much, colleagues. Thank you all uh, for your time and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you all. And indeed, the weekend for the, for the holiday tomorrow and Monday. So. Uh, enjoy Easter weekend, colleagues, if I don't see you beforehand. Thank you. Bye now. Bye-bye. Hope you get used to Bye. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>